Hello, today I wanted to talk about our next project, which is State of Being Cups. You could also call them mugs. Mugs are more often ceramic. Um, cups can be made of other materials more often, so mugs would probably be more appropriate name for these. So what I mean by state of being is kind of another word that goes along with that is emotion. It's kind of how you are and how your current situation is. So two different, you can have the same subject matter, but have two different kinds of state of beings. Being. So over here we have two different cups and they're both about cats. But you can tell the state of being for this cup is very calm, chill, relaxed. And the one for this one is definitely more grumpy, a little bit more pessimistic. So you could also boil that down to emotions of um, grumpy to happy. Either way will work. And another little interesting cup uh, detail you could have is have emphasis on the handle. For this cup, it's a pretty normal round cup, but then they have that creepy little uh, tentacle coming out the side. So there's a lot of different ways with a cup to get across an emotion or a state of being. When we get to the actual project, things that tend to go wrong are that if you don't wrap your project up well, um, your pieces can break off accidentally or they'll be difficult to put together. That's when we get to the actual clay part. Um, handles break very easily and people get frustrated with this project when they pick up the handles by accident and break them. Um, you can get full credit for this. If for the actual clay project, if you just make a lid for it, I count that as well. And then I wanted to give more examples of state of beings, as in hungry, in pain, happy, enduring, introverted, volatile, hopeful, frail, disorganized, boring, nurturing, lazy, hyper, fearful, curious. So there's definitely some emotions in there, like happy, um, hopeful, but there's the more state of being ones, like Hungry isn't really an emotion. It's something more that you feel, but it's not quite an emotion. And likewise with pain, people wouldn't really consider in pain an emotion. It'd be more of a state of being. But anything along those lines of you try to communicate um, the particular state of being that you choose is going to be good for this project. So what kind of emotional response do these mugs evoke? For this first one, it's very rainbow colored, happy and bright. A lot of little details on the bottom on the inside. So I think it's kind of like childlike when you have a lot of rainbow going on and also very happy. This one's kind of whimsical because it's a unicorn, but it's quite a plump unicorn with her little hooves and her little tail coming out. Um, and then this last one is quite scary, um, kind of a horror theme, so definitely very contrasting to these two happy ones right here. And again, this one is more of a creepy, crawly type one. The little handle, handle comes out in the end, um, and it looks like it has a mouth and teeth. Definitely very creepy. And on the other hand, you have this one that looks kind of like a building with little people peering out and a little tree on the side. So calm, maybe they're watching something like fireworks happening. You don't quite know what's going on, but definitely more calm than the creepy one. And then this last one, I know it can be kind of hard to see, but there's little butterfly cutouts, and the little it's like the little butterflies have escaped and are now climbing on the cup. So it's definitely kind of a soft, um, calm, peaceful cup. Both of these that contrast again to the creepy one. You can have fun adding different details to the outside, like with this one, he has his cute little feet hanging out. This one has little spoons that go with the cups that are tucked away into the handle that you can take out. And this little guy just has a little bird perched on his cup. That's the only little detail. It's a pretty plain cup otherwise, but that little detail does make it nice. Likewise, you could add way different types of things, whatever your imagination can be. Just consider what kind of emotion or state of being you're having. So a giraffe probably has kind of like a sense of an elegant, tall, calm presence. And then a wolf is more like fierce, maybe playful, that kind of thing. And over here, a little bit more 
uh, handle detail to show off to you guys for something that seems simple but is still quite fun. And then this one they mainly focused on the color and the this kind of texture that they gave it afterwards. So it doesn't have to be super obvious what your uh, state of being or emotion is. You can be a little more subtle about it if you'd like to. And again, just more examples. This little uh, sheet right here has these little coils all put on to make it look kind of cozy and warm. This would be a great cup for winter. This one has a little heart in the handle. That's actually quite tricky to do freehanded. I had a student attempt to do this and it took her quite a while to try and recreate this cup, but she had a lot of fun doing it. And then this little leaf detail on the handle I thought was nice. You could have a basic cup shape and then add the little details afterwards. You could also add something to the inside of your cup. Um, if you were to do this for the actual clay project, you would have to hollow out the bottom. So you see this little bear, and with this one, they have little, they have a hole here that lets the air from the bear escape. It's hard to see from this picture, but you'd have to carve out underneath the bear and then make sure the air is able to get out the bottom. But again, these are just considerations for the actual clay project. What you guys will be doing is just designing your actual cups. If we were in class, you'd be making a paper version of this so that we'd be able to see how the paper wraps around our cup, how you have to sometimes move the cup around to see what's on one side to the other. But for you guys, you're going to do a design that has both the front and the back of the cup and design it as you would like. Um, but maquettes, which are practice models of what you want to make, are a really helpful tool for any kind of sculptural project because it helps you think about space and placing. Alright, that's about it for this one.